Hello everyone and welcome to your Photoshop Creative Challenge. My name is Wade Acuff. I'm an artist and illustrator and I'm also your host for this last Photoshop Challenge. I believe it's the last Photoshop Challenge of the year. Uh, but that doesn't mean the fun is over. Tomorrow we will have a community day uh, where we'll take a look at all the challenges that you guys have put in our Discord. You can find a link to that Discord in the description below. Um, so get them in there. I'll be over on the Discord giving feedback uh, off and on throughout the day. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, I look forward to that tomorrow for sure. Uh, there is also a starter file in the description below. We're going to be sticking really closely to that starter file. Um, but I will give you all the tools to make up your own designs and work, you know, however you see fit for this challenge. Uh, let's say hi to chat. I'm looking over. When I look over here, that's chat. What's up, Ted? What's up, General Kenobi, Anki, Jack? How's it going, everybody? Uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So today we're going to make a cross stitch effect. Uh, we're going to create a holiday greeting that has a cross stitch effect. Uh, this is kind of a branding thing if you had some kind of brand that needed that effect throughout. So that's how we're kind of labeling this. Uh, real quick, who who in chat does cross stitch? Who, who knows what cross stitch is? Um, Cross stitch is, of course, like uh, it's a craft, but it's basically making little squares of uh, stitched, stitched colors on um, you know, a backing to make something that sort of looks like this, which is what we're going to sort of make today. Um, let's see, anybody chiming in for... Oh, that's right. Got to wait for the delay. I'll take a look back in a second. Uh, so today's starter file is super small. But that's intentional because essentially what we're doing, because cross stitch is essentially pixel art. It's super uh, pixelated, small squares of color. So I have done a uh, pixel art challenge in the past. It goes a little bit more in depth, but we'll cover the basics on this. And I just want to show you how I built this real quick. I made a sketch. Surprise, surprise. I made a little sketch uh, and then scaled the sketch down. And then the drawing tools for this, if you paint, you don't want to use a regular paintbrush because you're going to get some aliasing, which is, uh, we want this anti-aliasing, which is all these little um, tinted squares around your color. It's trying to smooth it out visually, but we don't want that. We want the jagged edges. Uh, so to do that, we use the pencil tool, which is over here. And you can paint and see that it only gives you uh, hard edges. Uh, but I took up my sketch um, and I just start painting in. I wanted this area to be white so I can paint this in. And that's one way to do it. It's super quick because, you know, this image size is only 128 by 128 pixels. Uh, we will scale it up later to make it printable. Uh, but you can create an area like that and then press G for your, what's usually your gradient tool, but it's also the paint bucket tool. And then you can just put in the fill in the areas that you know you want to fill in. Let's see. Uh, let me go back and chat and see. It. Yes, digital cross stitch like embroidery on canvas. Yes, very very much. Um, all right. So to, like I was saying with the paint bucket, you can just make swaths, large patches of color, fill in quickly just by using that. Uh, so those are a couple of ways to, to make this happen. Uh, we'll, we'll explore a few more as I go through the starter file. I'm going to delete that layer, hide our sketch, turn on our pattern. So essentially our sketch was our pattern. Um, but I have made this, uh, if you download it, you'll see that there are uh, several layers that are just separated by color or elements, body parts, and that's all of them together. But if you noticed in the example, we want to add a little shading. We want to give it a little bit more uh, a shading effect. Uh, so I'm going to grab all of them, turn on uh, lock pixel, or it's the uh, lock transparency, so they will only be painting on the opaque pixels. And then from there, it's really simple. Once you have your design, once you set up you know, your sketch, if you're going to make your own, then, and you've got everything filled in in the color blocks, then you just come in here and start picking colors. I just use the eyedropper, change this color, this value to a little bit darker. 
and just add some, uh, excuse me, add some shading under the nose. What I like to do, excuse me, instead of uh, erasing is just color picking. Since we're already on a color, a layer that already has that color, I just color pick to use as an eraser so I can go back and forth until I get what I want. I do want to add a highlight to this. And I'm going to have to speed up a little bit. Uh, ooh, that's not a good color. Add a little bit of a highlight to this. Sure, that works. I do want to put some shading on these hands. And you can't go, you can't draw out of the, with the um, lock transparency, you can't draw outside of your shapes anymore. So you're good to go just crazy. Um, don't worry about the edges. Uh, and I'm going to move, just move on down the line. I'm going to work on the white hat and sleeve parts of this. Just going to grab something. And I think I'm just going to do the edges. Doesn't look great against that gray background, but we won't have a gray background when we're done. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Hopefully it'll work out. Uh, I wanna, don't want to forget these areas. Just a little bit on that one to the red. Now there are the, some of the box, the presents down here are in this, but I'm, we're going to deal with those later. Uh, so I'm going to grab this red and also don't forget to, if you make a pattern, uh, don't stress too much that, uh, you know, you, if you go off pattern, it, this, there's no, there's no right or wrong for this. You can also scale your brush really way up to cover larger areas. Uh, oh, and that's another thing I want to note is uh, if I move, go to uh, the move tool and I, I'm pressing V on the keyboard, but I want to go back to my brush by pressing B, it's going to take me back to the pencil. It'll do that for any brush you select. If I move uh, back to V, uh, pressing B back to the brush, it will take me back to the brush that I was just on. If you want to cycle through the brushes, shift, hold shift and press B and you'll see it cycling through the different brushes. Uh, it's just good to know that you don't have to switch every time to go back. I'm going to put a little bit of flavor on this. Something like that. And moving right along, let's see, what layer is this? We don't want to do anything with that. Nothing on the green, because those are only the presents. I want to, uh, oh, we have more to do with the red. I'm neglecting some of the other parts. Uh, I want to hide, shadow, shadow, shadow. Get a little arm separation. Get some shadow under this beard. Let's see, bam, bam, bam. Something like that, maybe. I'm gonna give him a little bit more shadow right here. Cool. Um, let's see, maybe, yeah, there we go. All right, now onto this brown layer. I want to make his shoes a little bit, give a little bit of shading. Yeah, there we go, here. Super quick, grab this as well, and I'm gonna add a highlight on top of the boot. What's that a boot? Um, and then let's see, we're gonna get to the beard. Uh, and another way to draw, like we've done before, and I know you've seen others do this as well, just using the lasso tool. I'm gonna come in here, add a few details, um, and close everything off. Um, and then back to our brush. But look, look at what's happening. We're getting that kind of tint, uh, that kind of like steps in our shading. We don't want that. You could have it, but to keep more of a closer look to cross stitch, uh, you don't want that. So what you have to do, make sure when you press, uh, get in your lasso tool, selecting it, turn off anti-aliasing. That is not your friend for digital art. You wanna turn that off. Uh, but you also have to make a new selection because it still remembers this as uh, aliased. Anti-aliasing is still on. All right, so let's uh, reselect. Just wanted to show you, let you know that that's a thing in case you're like, oh no, why is this not working? So now when we do it, <clears throat> and I'm going to go to our paint bucket, grab a different gray, actually. Keeping it warm, though drop it and now it's square pixels actually I want it I want it warmer than that 
Oops. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Uh, and I am going to paint a little bit of shadow under here. Just under that cap. All right, so let's move on to our suitcase, which this guy is a traveling gnome, I think. Um, so let's, I want to kind of give it an edge. And then maybe a part where the clasp or zipper is running down this front edge. Something like that. Um, and then, let's see, what else? Um, let's add some stickers. I want to maybe add a sticker to this. I'm just going to grab, I'm going to make a new layer, actually. And you could do anything you wanted to this on top. You could add shades. You could change the hat out to be something else. Um, I'm going to pick a slightly different color shadow, just a little bit of a change to make it look like it's wrapping around the front. Um, I'm going to grab this dark red and make another one right there maybe. And then I want to add, I don't know, an orange, an orange one just because I want one. Something like that. Okay, so now it kind of looks like, you know, stickers from the places he's traveled potentially. Uh, we still need to add shadows to our um, boxes over here. Uh, and I'm just going to grab the lasso tool. I actually want the edge of this one to be selected. Uh, so with the lasso tool, if you hold down alt or option, you'll get a subtraction, which will let you remove uh, you know, whatever you want from your selection. Or if you hold down shift, you'll get an addition. And so I want that to be like that. Maybe a little bit more of an angle. Oh, I want to add, sorry. You can also do this up here. There are uh, options to leave your selection on and you can just start making selections uh, or removing selections based on these options up here. Or you can intersect. So there's there are options for that. Um, and I think for this, I'm just gonna paint this real quick. I do need to get the inverse of this. So control shift, control or command shift I, select the inverse and then we can paint with that red. Uh, and then we'll bump over to the green layer. I do want the bottom of this to be a slightly different colored green because it is in shadow. The deselect and, you know, looking okay. It's a little rough, actually. I'm going to clean up that red layer real quick. Keeping an eye on the time. Taking a look at... Sean says we love options. Yes, yes, we do. All right, I'm going to make another selection for this shadow over here. Since we're already on our red layer, I can just scribble that in real quick. Uh, switch over to our green, bump to our green layer, paint that in. Uh, I do want the green outline for this too, and I can just do that manually. Bam. All right, so now the fun part, the fun part, uh, even more fun part, I should say it that way. Press T for type, and you can make pixel art type and drag this below everything um, I want this to be this dark color red color and then I'm going to type in gnome for the holidays yep that's right that's what it says so our traveling gnome is home for the holidays but you, you get it you get the idea uh, but there, we, again, we have this anti-aliasing. We don't want that. If you come to your character panel and right down here where it says sharp or whatever you have selected, select none. And then automatically you get pixel art text. Uh, but it does it for every font. Some of them are not very readable. Uh, but you have options. Like Sean said, we love options. Uh, other options are to make adjustments on this because it looks like our... F and O might be a little far apart. Our A is a little, uh, there's a little bit too much space. So to make those changes, you just uh, grab the letter you want, clicking on it. And then if you hold Alt or Option, and this works for any type. It doesn't have to be pixel art type. Um, you can just bump left or right to add space until it starts to look the way you want it to look. 
And I'm just coming in here and separating some of these. And you'll see, you'll notice it changes it for other letters, but you kind of have to just finesse it until you get it where you want it. Like, see, I've just made that. Uh, let's go back. Let's see how that looks. All right, so that's okay. Um, we can take a look through our history to see what it looked like before. That's what it looked like before, and that's what it looks like after. Just a little bit better, a little bit more cleaned up. All right, so now we're going to move on to uh, scaling this up so that we could print this if we wanted to. Um, love a good pun, yeah. Yeah. Let's see, so rasterize your type before you do anything. Make sure everything's locked in the way you want it. Rasterize it, because if you don't rasterize it before you scale up, you're just gonna have really small type. <laughs> so make sure that's locked in. Um, let's see. And then go to image size. And we can take a look at what our image was. 128, yeah, 128 by 128. Uh, the thing you want to do, normally it's a set to automatic. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up. Uh, da -da -da. And change it back to inches just so I can see it. Press, I'm gonna take it to about six inches. You could go higher, but you can see over here in our preview, it does not look good. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you go down to nearest a neighbor, hard edge. That's what we're looking for. Click OK, and then we get our upscaled, full, uh, full printable resolution, uh, workable. Let's put it that way. Um, image, okay, the first thing I wanna do, just to make sure we have it, I'm gonna make a copy of this layer by drag, uh, holding Alter Option and then dragging down. I'm gonna hide it. I do want to merge this down, which is why I made a copy. I'm gonna press Control or Command E to make uh, the merge that down. I'm actually gonna go ahead and merge it with our, you know what, I'll make a copy of our type. It's already rasterized. We're not doing much more damage to it. Uh, I'm gonna grab that so now everything is all on one layer. Now we get to make our stitch. Uh, and this is really easy. We're gonna make a pattern. We're gonna fill it with a pattern overlay. But to start, I'm just gonna make uh, grab the marquee tool, this little selection, uh, this tool up here, and hold down shift so that you have a nice and square shape. I'm just gonna bump in here a little bit. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter the size, you just want enough uh, size to uh, have de some detail, some curved detail, because we're gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna call this layer a stitch. Switch to our brush. Make sure our, our foreground is black and what type of brush we have. I have a hard round with a taper. It's exactly what I want. And this is really going to be this. This is our stitch. I'm just freehanding, just getting enough coverage to make kind of a, this is going to cross, they're going to cross each other like, in, like a little X. Um, and I'm just kind of making sure there's a little bit of uh, bending out towards the other corners. Because what we're going to uh, inevitably, uh, what we're going to do eventually is make this into a mask, uh, a layer mask that we can use on our image. All right, so that's good enough for me. I'm going to press Control J uh, to make a copy. So we have two of those. Um, uh, pressing Control or Command T and rotating around until it forms our square. Now uh, I'm going to grab both of them select both of them, turn our background layer off, and then uh, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna be using history here. So if you're familiar with the history, it's kind of showing us what we're doing as we're going. But I'm gonna go uh, trim this based on transparent pixel. It's gonna give us this out, oh, didn't mean to do that. It's gonna give us this outline. I'm gonna select Control A, Control or Command A, to grab the entire canvas. And then from there, I'm gonna to go to uh, edit, define pattern, and I'm just gonna call this, call this cross stitch pattern. And I think you probably know where this is going. Back to our history, I'm gonna bump up before we went to our trim, and then we're back. We went back in time, <laughs> digitally, virtually. Uh, and then we're gonna bring everything back in. I'm gonna drag these down below and hide them. We don't need that anymore. 
Uh, now with our image selected, I'm going to make a copy, uh, select it by hitting Control uh, or Command and just tapping on the layer and it's going to give us a selection. I'm going to fill that, Shift F5 with the right layer selected, fill that with white, and then from there I'm going to double click to get to our layer styles and then pattern overlay. Uh, and the thing you want to do here, uh, let me make sure that I am on the right one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now we're on the right one. Um, what I want to do is scale this. I want to make sure that at least a part of that X, this is it really big, you don't want that. Part of that X is um, showing up in the single, um, I guess you would call it single pixel. Uh, and you can scale it up to taste, but that's what I'm looking for down here. Uh, just making sure you're getting coverage with that pixel. So you can scale that up, click OK. From there, we can keep that selected because I'm going to come in here with our color range and grab, make sure we're selected on our stitch. Uh, and that's all about med medium fuzziness. It doesn't really matter because it's so small. You just want to make sure you can see through it a little bit. And then I'm going to grab, I'm going to make a copy of this just to have it, but because uh, I want to I want to keep a copy that's not affected. And then I'm going to add this layer mask, and then we start to get our image to look. It's going to look a little funky. Uh, we've got some adjustment to do. Um, I'm going to bring in a background, and I just found this on uh, Adobe Stock. I don't like the color of it, but I like the size of it. Pull this in, Control or Command T to scale this to the edges. It's good for me. Um, then the next thing I want to do is possibly, let's see, bring, turn our gnome under, the, the copy we made for underneath. I'm just making a copy just to be safe. Uh, and I want to turn the opacity down on that so that we start to get that effect. Uh, it just kind of makes it a little denser. Um, the next thing I want to do is add some shadow, oh, add some layer styles to this. Um, and I'm going to go through this really quickly because we're running out of time. Uh, add, add a bevel and emboss to that layer. But you don't need any of the depth or anything. Really. You don't, basically, you're going to have to do it to taste. The things to know is to make sure that it's emboss, uh, smooth, and the direction is up. And you can adjust the size as you see fit. Uh, that's just going to add a little bit of a bump of highlight to the top. Uh, and I'm keeping it really soft here, actually. Uh, like very minor changes. Uh, and then I'm going to add that. Then I want to add a drop shadow doing the same thing. Uh, and this drop shadow, again, is very minimal. I'm actually going to bring the opacity down quite a bit. And we're basically there. Basically there. Uh, what I would do to taste... Uh, is we have this underlying layer. Um, I could, you could either you could either make a copy of the bevel embossed and, and drop shadowed layer, and then bump that down if you want. I can just add a little bit of thickness to your um, to your shadows, or you could add a new shadow. There's a lot of things you could do here. I'm going to bring the opacity down in this. But the one thing I want to do, let me make sure is with the solid color, which is what this is, just the opacity is down. I want to make sure that we see some of the edges. So with just an eraser, I'm going to come in here and start erasing out some imperfections, just some little places where you're not seeing this hard edge. Let's see, and speaking of hard edge, let me make our brush hardness. There we go. So now you're going to see more of that stitch look kind of peeking through and it gets rid of some of these pixely edges, it gives us a little bit of detail. And that all depends on your pattern too. If you made your pattern a little bit more open, it would appear more, you know, um, organic. So that is a way to get your cross stitch effect. Uh, and look, oh, I do want to, I don't like the yellow. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this real quick with a hue saturation. Bring our saturation down. 
might even, yeah, maybe bring this down to, I don't know, something like that. Maybe even add an overlay, maybe make your top layer an overlay layer, just to bump it, and then maybe bring that opacity down just a little bit. Something like that. All right, so yeah, pixel art from the olden days. Exactly, that's what we've done here. Um, that's gonna do it for the challenge, but just as a reminder, um, get your work into the Discord. There's a link below in the description, uh, or we can get a, um, uh, maybe we can get Sam to drop us another link. I think he just did. It's fine. Join the Discord. We're going to have Community Day tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be amazing. I hope you guys will join us for that. Uh, we'll be discussing some things uh, and you know, just looking at all the work from the community. Uh, stick around for uh, Zachary Bromberg, who's coming up with up level, to up-level your video skills, coming up next. And that's going to do it for me, everybody. Thanks for this uh, great week. Uh, we've got more tomorrow, so uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.